We are again, this is Brother Peter with Tidbits from the Word. This morning we're going to take another look, or today, we're going to take another look at Nehemiah. Nehemiah was a young man who was stolen away from Jerusalem when he was a, a very young man and uh, taken to the king's palace and trained to be the cupbearer for this particular king. And uh, as he was doing his job uh, and he got older, he had not forgotten the God that he uh, had served in Israel, in Jerusalem. In verse 5, he uh, has a prayer that he starts praying to the Lord God of heaven. And he says, Oh Lord, God of heaven. First thing we notice, he recognized that God was his Lord still. And my question to me is, Brother Peter, is your, is the God of heaven your Lord? Is he my Lord? Yes, I can say he is my Lord. Am I always a good master, a good master in this world of what the Lord has me do? No. I, my wife likes watching an old program on TV about uh, some abbey or something. And in there, there is a man who is the Lord of the house. And that man that's the Lord of the house, all of his requests in that house are kept to the T. And if anything's not, it's brought to, uh, uh, forward and corrected. And that's the way it needs to be in our life with the Lord God of heaven. Now, and he said, great and terrible God, great and terrible. Terrible God. What did he mean when he said terrible God? What he means is there are consequences if you do not follow the Lord. You say, Lord, forgive me of my sin. Come in my heart and save my soul. And you got saved. And now you don't follow him. You don't do what he says or you do opposite. You, you, uh, you actually you do go to church, but you run your mouth on the way home or you run your mouth at church or you say things or you talk out of school or you, you do things that you shouldn't do. Well, I want you to know God is a, a loving God. He's a merciful God. He's a wonderful God, but he's also, in another sense, a terrible God. You are going to pay for by, with terror for that which you do that is opposite of what God would have you do. How do you say that, Brother Peter? How do you know that, Brother Peter? I've been saved 40 years, and I'm trying to follow the Lord to the best of my ability. But yesterday, I worked hard yesterday. I worked real hard yesterday. I can't count that for godliness unless God was involved in it. Well, he was involved in it. But the last thing last night when I went to bed, I watched a TV program instead of reading the Bible or praying uh, like I should to this great Lord of mine and this great God of mine. Therefore, my eyes were sleepless, and uh, there was no rest, no rest in my being because I left out the most important part of my life. Now, can you pray this prayer yourself that Nehemiah prayed this morning? Can you pray, Lord, O oh God, great and terrible Lord, and merciful Lord he is too, but he is also, a, and when he has to be, a terrible Lord. God's character was brought up here by Nehemiah. And to keep his covenant, you have to, you have mercy. If you keep his covenant, you'll have mercy. For them that love you and keep your commandments. He said, Nehemiah said to those that love you, God, and keep your commandments. You're, you're a merciful God. But those that love you, but break your commandments, you have to become a terrible God. Now, Nehemiah asked six things right here, right quick like, from the Lord God of heaven. This is one of the first things he said. Let your ear be attentive. Verse 6. Do you dare, do you dare say, Lord, let your ear be attentive to me? Do you dare say that? Are you walking close enough to God to say, let your ear be attentive to me, Lord? 
Or are you afraid to say that? You're afraid to have God look at you. Are you think that you're going to get the mercy of God when you ask for his ear? Or are you going to have to get the terribleness judgment, some type of judgment because of your behavior? Now your behavior needs to become God. Now let me see what he said. He said, let your ear be toward me. Now, uh-oh, here's a real tough one right here. He said, let your eyes be upon me. Let your eyes be upon me. Uh-oh. Now he's asked for God to look at him. God to hear him and God to look at him. Wow. Now, he said, remember I beseech you the words commanded to Moses. And now he's telling God to remember the words can't commanded by Moses. You know what he's saying? He's saying, I'm keeping these words. Otherwise, he couldn't ask God to listen and look if he wasn't keeping the words that were commanded by Moses. Now, and uh, let's look in verse 11. Let now your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant. Now, he is a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ and the God of heaven. You say, how, how, why, Peter, do you think that he's still a servant? Because somebody trained him when he was a young man. He was stole away. Let's say he was 13 when he was stole from Jerusalem. By the age of 13, he had enough in him so that he could go live uh, 17 more years with a heathen king in a heathen land and every day in a heathen place with heathen stuff going on and yet follow the Lord God of heaven with his heart. He must have been a man that kept his mouth shut except when he was asked or spoke to other than when he was speaking to the Lord God of heaven. Boy, the Lord said, Ah, great is the man that could bridle his tongue. Boy, if we could bridle our tongue, we could sure stay out of trouble. Look at this. He said, Propose your servant this day. Propose, pr prosper, excuse me, prosper, prosper, I can't see good, uh, prosper your servant this day. Prosper your servant this day. What is a prosperity of God on this earth today for you and I? It's many things. That we're able to pay our rent. We're able to put food on the table. We're able to have lights over our head. We're able to work on our house and improve it and keep it up. We're able to do many things. What is the basic main thing? What is the main thing? The, the preacher preached the other night. Keep the main thing, the main thing. Keep the main thing, the main thing. What is serving Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior is the main thing. Sometime during the day to witness to somebody. Do you, uh, you say you're homebound or you can't get out much. But there's a man comes around and reads your meter. Does he know you're a Christian? Do you give him a bottle of water? you give him an apple, an orange? Do you give him a good and pleasant word? Do you say God is good this day? What a nice day for you to be out reading the meter. Or when it's raining, say, huh, you know the Lord knew we needed this rain. You and I just have to uh, cover up, won't we? Do you, I, you, I, I, does people know that you're God's servant? Or are you a grumpy old woman or man? Look, Nehemiah was clarifying who he was. And he said, Prosper your servant today, God. Talking about himself. Grant him mercy in the sight of this man, the king. Now we're coming to a place to where there's a physical king over Nehemiah. And Nehemiah's going to ask him some hard things for, for, a, for a servant to ask his master. Now this king had learned to love Nehemiah. Also the king's wife had learned to love Nehemiah. 
God had given Nehemiah favor like he did Joseph in Egypt. And when Nehemiah begins, he has a confession to make. And this confession he makes is, I pray for you day and night. Now, this is he's praying for the king day and night. I confess the sins of Israel. He prays for Israel day and night. And he also prays for his master. But he prays for Israel day and night. That's his brothers and his sisters away from home and, and, and back home where he came from. My father's house and I have sinned. Oh, excuse me. We have all sinned against you. Man, if there was anybody that probably hadn't sinned against the Lord God of heaven, it was Nehemiah. But he includes himself in the prayer that we have all, we have all sinned. And you know what God said in Second Chronicles seven fourteen: If my people, which are called by my name, <coughs> will humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways, and seek my face, then I will hear from heaven, and I will come and heal their land. This is what America needs today. We need our land healed today. We are, we are fast gone uh, to socialists. We're going to be a socialist country in a few months. Totally socialist. You're going to take God completely out of the country. Took him out of the schools, out of everywhere else, and out of everything. Took him out of public speaking, taking him out of the radio, taking him out of everything. Hey, we're fixing to get shut down. The Christian is fixing to get shut down in the United States of America. We're going to become socialists. We're going to start working for the country. And it's going to start happening. And so we need to get on our knees and start doing some praying. I must hurry. My father's house and I have sinned. We have dealt very uh, corruptly against you. We have, we have not. We, the, the way we've dealt corruptly with you is we forgot you. We hung you on a coat rack and left you, and we went about our way, did our own thing. Uh, we have not kept your commandments. He said, and, and not kept your commandments. We, we know them, but we didn't keep them. We know it's wrong to lie, but we tell a little lie and every now and then. We know it's wrong to steal, but we carry things home from work uh, with us every day. We know it's wrong to do these things, but we do them. And now we're having to face the 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 thing so uh, uh we have not kept your statutes that's what i'm talking about the statutes of god thou shalt not lie steal cheat kill do all these things covet uh, we have not kept your judgments now the judgments of god are the things that bring upon you a good or bad judgment the judgments of god are all good judgments they're all pure judgments they're all proper judgments. They're all judgments based upon the righteousness of God. And in them, there is no darkness, no shadow of darkness. You cannot do wrong to get a right end. You cannot do wrong to get make the end come out right. The end won't come out right if you do wrong. The end will be wrong also. Even though it may look right, it will be wrong and it will catch up with you one day it will catch up with you i have had somebody say to me before peter did you a year or two ago do this thing did you do it what can i say other than yes i did if i did and they will say to me do you not know that was not a way to go about it that was not the right thing you had an outcome, and that outcome now is catching up with you because it's a wrong outcome. So we must be careful to do the right thing. You and I, if we are calling Jesus our Lord, and we are Christians, we are to get in the New Testament. We are to follow what the Apostle Paul penned down the words of Jesus Christ himself. Paul said he set himself apart for three years not taught of any man, but taught of the Holy Spirit. 
And the 14 books that Paul is responsible of in the New Testament were given to him directly in his heart by the Holy Spirit of God. Are they physical examples? Yes, they are. Are they all kinds of types of examples? Yes, they are. But they are also spiritual examples. When Jesus said to Paul, it's hard to kick against the pricks, he's talking about the ox goad that picks you. Every time you turn the wrong way, you are turned back around. If you are taking an oxen through town, you don't want him walking in the storefronts. You want him walking straight through town. And that's what Jesus wants. He wants us to walk straight through this earth and not get entangled in the earth. Walk straight through, but not get entangled in the earth. We are passes through. This is our temporary dwelling place right here. Now, this is Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. I must go now. I'm designating this particular tidbit to one of my sons named Paul today who is in Lima, Peru. I would love him to look at, look at this this afternoon, late this afternoon. I'm going to get it on this morning where he can look at it late this afternoon. Uh, well, for now, I must go. It's Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. Bye-bye. I got to shut it off, ain't I?